Hey Saluki fans, this is Nicole Martin of SIU Women's Basketball, and you're listening to the Saluki Standards Podcast with Connor Onion. Welcome back for week four of the Saluki Standards Podcast, and happy crossover season. This is a fantastic time of year. Out of the 15 sports at SIU, I think we've got pretty much everybody either in spring workouts right now or in season currently. So a lot to keep you busy, a lot to watch, and uh, we are very sorry with the busyness of all that. Getting to your podcast one day late won't happen again. We'll get back to our typical Thursday releases next week. But all right, this week's guest is Nicole Martin of Saluki Women's Basketball, a multi-time all-conference pick, and the senior is currently top 10 in school history in scoring, and you've only got a couple more chances to see her play. The season winding down for Nicole and her teammates, and they have two more home games left. Uh, So if you get a chance, come out to the Banterra Center next Thursday, March 5th. They take on Loyola at 6 o'clock, and then Saturday, March 7th. It's already senior night, so Nicole and her uh, senior teammates will be honored on March 7th. That'll be a 2 o'clock tip against the Valparaiso Crusaders for Saluki Women's Basketball. So make your way out there on the 5th and the 7th, and now hear this from Nicole Martin. Get into your favorite movies first. I know you're a big movie buff. Yes, I do love movies. Um, My favorite genre of movies is probably like action. Um, I like adventure a lot, which kind of goes into action. Um... And comedy. I really like those genres, but my favorite movies are probably the Marvel movies. Um, yeah, they're definitely my favorites. I know I recently caught back up on like the Bad Boys because the last one just came out and I watched that one too. That was super good. So I like Bad Boys a lot. Um, but yeah, like anything action adventure type stuff i know you're big into the marvel movies yeah did you actually read the comics no not at all but i know my dad my dad still has like a lot of the packs of uh his from his like as he was a kid and so sometimes i would read them but not really but i would just like flip through for the pictures i wouldn't read them that's that's old school right there Mm, he has a lot of them too (laughs) keep Mm. it to your dad's generation Mm. yeah have that (laughs) well let's let's dive into the saluki standards a little bit here uh starting with integrity which uh, you know a lot of people interpret as honesty Mm -hmm. Uh, what do you think uh, is the importance of honesty or integrity and and what you're doing right now as a basketball player um uh i i definitely think being honest is probably the most important trait to have with yourself and others um i just feel like if you're not honest with yourself you know who are you like you don't really know who you are but as far as it being with basketball um I know me specifically understanding that like, you know, we're not perfect and we have things to fix. Like for me, it's like my temper and uh, like the way I speak with others or like my attitude. And so just understanding that that's an issue and then fixing it like is the next thing. So I think that's the biggest thing for me that I'm I've been trying to learn still in the process of learning um, through basketball. So, yeah, I know you're pretty hard on yourself. Yeah. (laughs) So how hard is it to be honest with your assessment of of what you're doing? Yeah, um, I know my mom. Yeah, it's funny that you said that because uh, my mom is probably she calls me like five days a week, you know, but uh, she kind of sees it, too, because they can't make all our basketball games, but she sees all, all the basketball games on TV. And so the biggest thing with her, like she's constantly saying, you know, don't be so hard on yourself. You know, we all make mistakes. We all mess up. Up. But um, I have to charge that with my parents and my family. You know, they know me the best. And so they always call, you know, if they see a game, if they even notice that I haven't called in a day, they like know something's up. So, yeah, I've, my family helps out with a lot. With that. There, there, there's a lot of uh, things there with your family. I mean, yeah. they're they're there to love you and support you first. Totally. But uh, how honest can they be sometimes oh with gosh. with how harsh they are or how, brutally, how nice they are brutally honest connor especially uh kasia you know she, she, right. she's up in here with me at school too and Your stays sister. with me at my apartment yeah kasia and so like kasia she watches every game so she's and she sits you know like those the okay it's our bench in, in those bleachers so she sees everything face front my expressions on my face you know my body language so yeah she's very honest with me and my family is are are those that I can take, you know, that brute uh, honesty from. And so, uh, yeah, like I said, it helps out a lot just understanding, you know, where I am, where I should be, you know, stuff like that. Are they also honest when things are going well for you? Um, Yeah, they are. But I know my mom is probably the roughest uh, with me on that, which I like, um, you know, because uh, she also did basketball throughout high school and c- college. But um, even if I do good, like, you know, 
but she's definitely just like, good job on rebounding, good job, you know, on, on whatever. So, yeah, they're honest on both ends, I would say. But my mom is probably more rougher on the <laughs> good thing side. <laughs> yeah, she, she knows the schematic. She played at Lincoln University in mm-hmm, Missouri. Mm-hmm. What's, the, what's the best compliment you've ever gotten from your mom? Um, I love it when she says that I worked hard because um, my mom, well, I never saw her p- p- play, but uh, according – to my dad who watched her also uh up there he was like yeah she worked hard like your mom that's one thing that she really did do and that's a ch- ch- trait that I want to get from her and so on the court you know when she sees that you know when some games and I'm just like oh I, I just did this or I, I only scored this um hearing that from her oh my gosh it, it means everything to me if she thinks that I worked hard that game so yeah integrity is also doing some of those things when you're not getting credit mm-hmm. and nobody's seeing it. Mm-hmm. And uh, I've seen you in the gym by yourself shooting free throws or practicing your jump shot or your post moves. I mean, how I'm trying to think of the right way to ask this. Um, how much of that stuff is hard to work on even when you're not getting the gratification of your family saying, Hey, I see you working hard. Mm-hmm. Um, I think for me, um, I don't know. Maybe it came from my mom and dad, too, because they've both worked hard. You know, my dad in football as well. But, like, I think that part kind of comes from the inside. Like, you know what you want to accomplish. You know what you want to do. So, like, I I feel like it's, like, an eternal thing that, like, keeps you going and doing that stuff, even though you may not get the recognition or something like that. But, yeah. Is it easier when you are getting the gratification? Oh, totally. (laughs) You love that part. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Uh, Also, under that branch of the Saluki Standards is leadership. Mm -hmm. Uh, Who do you look to the most in your family? You mentioned your mom and your Mm -hmm. sister, but uh, within your sibling group, Mm -hmm. you're the youngest or the second youngest Mm of eight? Nine. Nine. (laughs) Yeah. Nine. I mean, when you look to your older siblings, how much have they taught you about being a leader and uh, Mm -hmm. being able to lead now that you are one of the older players in the Saluki basketball program? Um, I definitely want to say, uh, I don't want to say one person, you know, kind of stood out the most because I've learned a lot of things from every single one of my siblings, um, for sure. But if anybody, I'm going to go with my oldest sister, Angie, who's the oldest of us all, you know, just seeing her, you know, how she acted when, uh, my parents were gone as kids and she'd be the, uh, you know, the kick kid in charge like don't do this don't do this and as a kid you're just like bro you're not mom or dad don't tell me what to do but like honestly as I got older and I saw you know you know this is something that they put in her to you know the trust that they had in her and like how she did it you know we were always safe we were always fed we were always you know bathed I don't know so maybe I would say Angie probably the oldest sibling kind of learned that from her and like how how she's very mature and wise and what she says to us and like I don't know how she just speaks to us so I would say Angie for sure how much older is she than you Angie is I know Tiffany who's the second oldest is 10 years older than me so I think Angie is 11 or 12 oldest hard hard to keep track of I know it really now it's getting hard it really is I'm not even gonna lie that's that's got to be um it's obviously unique having you know siblings with that wide of a range Mm -hmm. you've got a chance to both be a follower and a leader totally you also have a younger sibling yeah how do you feel like you've been an example for your younger sibling Dude, oh my gosh Yolanda I wish my parents were here they have so much to say about her but like she's different she's very different um I think with her being the baby uh she has been babied for so many years and like she's a freshman in college now and so it's really hitting her on like you know you need to do this you have to do this on your own and uh, I think that was taboo for her because she went through like a breakdown like going from high school to college and so um and I would say out of all the siblings I'm closest with her oddly enough but maybe not as odd because we're both the babies but um as far as me helping her out and being a leader just uh being there each step of the way you know saying like Nicole or Yolanda we all had to do this you know I had to do this as well and so just trying to speak to her calm her down and just explain to her that it's going to be okay type Mm -hmm. thing but yeah and that's that's something you've mentioned that Kasia helped you with totally. when she was playing basketball mm-hmm. with you. And I, Connor, I told you I did not want to come to the school because she was here, and then let alone be on my same team. Like it was, and it's not like I don't. We're my family is very. Cool. Look, so I love them all. So it wasn't anything about that. It was just about, you know, this is the first time I can like spread my wings and like be on my own. But I didn't know how much um, I still needed that uh, piece of family like with me physically right. because she helped me out so much. You know this like so much last year. And yeah. so, yeah, she definitely was there for me when I needed her still now. She yeah. helped me out a lot. Yeah. No, she's she seems to be that steady presence yeah. that, that you had kind of been looking for, right? Mm-hmm. I, I agree. Yeah. I would say, yeah. Go, uh, go outside your family. 
family for a little bit. There are a lot of options to pick from mm-hmm. in, a, in a big family, but who's the best leader that you know outside of your family? Um, outside of my family. Hmm. So this is like anybody. Can be anybody. Can be basketball, not basketball, classmate, hmm. anybody else in your life. Oh, uh, well, I'm going to go past basketball, but like older school, not t- too old, but um, Kylie Gablehausen. Okay. Um, yeah, I can't say enough about Kylie. Um, even through high school when I was a freshman then, like I feel like I've never been led by such a great captain as uh, Kylie, you know, both on and off the court. You know, she just made sure that the whole team was a family. She never had even her own friends that, uh, you know, there were on the team. She made sure that we all hung out with each other. We all spoke with each other. She had a great way of just having it feel like a family feel off the court. And then on the court, obviously, you know, if I lost my head, Nicole, calm down. Uh, there, What game was it where, like I said, something about the refs and she like – had her hand over my mouth I was like oh I I needed that but I don't know uh Kylie I I never like I I still sometimes uh you know uh call her or text her even now but I definitely feel like she's probably the best person that I've been led by through basketball and anything I've done I remember when she was a senior she expressed some of the pressure because she was the only senior yeah so there was there was a lot of pressure on her shoulders Mm -hmm. and she took it great though you wouldn't have even noticed Right. Yeah. No, she she handled that gracefully, yeah. like you're saying. But what advice has she given you now that, that you're the one that everybody's looking to to, to lead them? Because I know the first year she had left, um, I think I was a junior when she had left. And so uh, she uh, we had just played Bradley, and I think we lost there. And obviously she's there now. And so we took pictures and stuff. And then uh, we sh- I think I texted her first. And I was like, yeah, bro, like, I just don't know. You know, because I think around that time we were kind of up and down. And, like, it was assumed that we'd be good because we only lost her. But, I mean, and, and not just saying only lost her because she was a big help. Right. Uh, like, mentally, like, in every aspect for our team. But, um, you know, we were just texting. And I, I know the biggest thing she had said was, like, yeah, like, I – I know as a freshman and sophomore, it was easier to, you know, play because I was a p- person being led by someone else. And so um, and so then sh- she said it's just different now because now, like, I'm that person, like, I'm that leader. And so that was the first time it really hit me that, you know, I was an upperclassman. I was someone that was looked to, you know, f- for an example. And she kind of made it easier f- for me to uh, go into that role. Like, still now, I wouldn't say I'm as good as her at all. But, like... Uh, that was the first time that like it just hit me you know okay this is I'm a leader now well I'm looked to as one type right. thing and so yeah I think she definitely helped out with that even when she was gone what's been the greatest challenge for you this season in, in taking on that role um just uh understanding that there's no such thing as a perfect leader um I think you know I'm really hard on myself uh kind of you even see this on uh, you know f- with your own eyes but like I can be in it tense player like I'm yelling at someone if they don't pass it I'm screaming here or I'm doing this or I'm doing that and like I feel like uh understanding that uh we're all different so they the girls on my team take things differently you know maybe it is just for the game but they might be hurt you know whatever and so I think the biggest challenge is just understanding that we're all different and I can't talk to everybody the same way same as me like they can't they can't all speak with me the same way. Right. So just understanding how to talk with each and every one of the girls on my team in the way that's most fitting for them, I think is probably the biggest thing. Uh, And just, yeah, just understanding that there's no such thing as a perfect leader. Yeah. yeah. I I don't think that comes from a bad place though, right? Yeah. That's that's just because you care a lot. Totally. Like it's all about the game. It's all intensity. It's all that, but still like, we're all different. Like it, it just goes back to at that. Like, and I can't be upset because someone took it a different way. That's just how we're built. Maybe we're, that's just how it is. And right. So yeah. I know you've gone down the exercise science track yeah. here at SIU. Mm-hmm. When you graduate and you take some of the experiences as a leader here mm-hmm. in the basketball program, how do you think that'll help you in the real world? Um, I think it's going to help a lot. Um, I'm not sure I'm going to see myself in like a as a manager uh, anytime soon, but. If and when that time does come, one thing that will stick with me is the thing I just said, just understanding that we're all different. So, you know, making sure that the people under me know that I care about them. Like, I, I don't want to yell at somebody else or scream at them and then they feel like, oh, she just hates me. It, it, that's not what it is. It's just, you know, so just understanding that, you know, we're all different, you know, doing my research and, okay, so she, she, I can speak with this person like this, but I can't do the same thing with this. You know what I mean? Right. So, yeah. Right. Probably. No, that's, I mean, you've got, what, 14 different teammates <laughs> yeah. right now that, that you 
like you said, you got to talk to all of them mm-hmm. differently. Mm-hmm. And if you're a manager, it might be a hundred people mm-hmm. exactly. that you got to talk to differently. That's going to be tough. But yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you said tough. That was that was a good transition. <laughs> let's let's get into the toughness okay. aspect of the Saluki standards. I want to go back to your siblings real quick. Uh, having eight of them, mm-hmm. who's the toughest of those siblings? Hmm. Physically tough is probably Jalen just because he's the biggest of us all. He's like 6'4", 350. He's a big dude um, who's currently in L.A. right now and just living it up. But uh, I feel like the mentally toughest person on the team, um, that one's kind of harder because, like I said, I'm not around my siblings as much. But um, because I'm around Casey the most, I I know firsthand of what everything she's going through at the moment and what she has gone through. So I'm going to probably have to say her. Um, she's in her master's right now and I've known just from p- other conversations that it's tough, but like seeing it firsthand, she, uh, she's stressed out a lot, you know, but she st- continues to have a, 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 sm- a smile on her face helps, uh, her friends and I out. Like if I need it, um, she's still faithful to like her church, faithful to, to her schoolwork. You know, she's still doing everything that she needs to and can just to stay atop, a like, you know, everyday life I guess but probably her she's gone through a lot too and I've seen it like I said so. being the the second youngest and then seeing that trickle down of, yeah. of the leadership and the toughness of some of those above you yeah including the sibling right above you and yeah. Kasia mm-hmm. how do you think that's made you tougher um it definitely helps to see you know and again like I've learned a lot of different things from all eight of my siblings and just each and every time they go th- through something or they endure something and I see it with with my own eyes and see them on the other end still happy and like up like it makes me feel like anything in life that okay if they can do it I can and like we've all gone through our fair share of like a variety of different things and so I think just seeing that and then understanding okay so if that happens I'll be ready you know I can do it because Jalen did it or I can do it because Deborah did it you know so that I think that helps a lot just seeing it and knowing that I can do it too. Let's go. Let's go all the way to the top with your parents, both <laughs> yeah. being college athletes. Yeah. What uh, What influence on the toughness that you have have they had? Um. Man. Okay. So I, I, I tell my parents this every time that they come. Just like the sole fact that they like, I feel like it's tough just to have nine kids and raise us all. And you know, I, again, I don't know what we're all doing. I'm not. I don't see us all each time but I know that we're all good people like we're not out on drugs you know or whatever so I feel like they did a good job of like raising us and I know that's tough because my mom herself told me that there were a lot of times where she was tested you know she had to take a week off and go see her mom sometimes (laughs) in Ohio just to like get a breather right but like uh so just the sole fact of them having us nine kids and us being as well off as we are and you know just understanding that you know things will work out things will be okay and so I think that helps out a lot just seeing us yeah. When you're a kid, life is just oh, yeah. li- life you, as you know you it. D- you don't realize anything. Right. I was just having the best time of my life as a kid. I was like, ah, oh, this is great. But like now that I'm older and just uh, I know my sister Meal and her husband have two kids. And if ever I'm left with them for like 30 minutes, I'm like, oh, my gosh, when are they going to be back? Like so just to think like at one point five and then seven and then you have all nine of. Oh, my gosh, I couldn't fathom how crazy that would be. But yeah. Well, that's got to that's got to speak to your parents' toughness that mm-hmm. you didn't even realize it mm-hmm. when you were growing up, mm-hmm. right? For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what about uh, what about um, the the toughness that you've had as an athlete uh, through your parents, your, your your dad Joe playing football, your mm-hmm. your mom Pam playing mm-hmm. basketball in mm-hmm. college? Uh, how have they helped you through some of the the hurdles that you've had to go through? You know, you, you mentioned them calling you and, mm-hmm. and, and staying in touch, but yeah. what have they shared about you with, with their experiences about how to be tougher in your sport? The biggest one that I can remember is when I was a freshman. I know the first half of the season I was not playing. I think I averaged maybe two minutes um, as a freshman. And, you know, as a person, you know, when any athlete who comes out of D1 school, you're like the best at your high school, right. I, I assume, you know. And so, like, I was decent. You know, I was good at my high school. And so to come here and, like, we start season and, like, uh, they're setting up all the lights the jumbotron you're like oh I'm gonna be out there wow this is exciting and then the games come and you're sitting on the bench you know oh Kim you know go get whoever you know you know what I mean right and so it's just uh that was probably a a really depressing time for me because it's just like oh wow like 
you suck basically you can't even play and so I know when I was uh in that low slump my freshman year I called my dad or my both my mom and dad and my mom and my dad actually had very different experiences in their athletics at uh, LU whereas my mom you know she did well you know she was always the talk of the team whereas my dad um I, I know as a freshman and sophomore he got some time but when he was older uh he was saying that his coaches would not play him and I, I and I feel like that's harder you know as an upper class last minute not getting playing time and so he and I I I think around that time that's when when we really like uh able to like talk more uh you know about things and he was just like you know but I still uh uh showed up at each basketball practice or football practice I was always still there I still worked hard I still uh helped out my teammates um and so just hearing him say that because it's really funny because my parents like I'm still learning new things about them like right now like you think you know about your family but like he said that story and I was like in shock. I was like, my dad, like what? He didn't play, you know? And so, uh, you thought he, he was a superhero. Of course. I like, and so that was the first time that I, I was like, m- like my vision, it, it, it didn't change on my father, but like, it was just like, wow, he's human too. Like we all, again, it just goes back to, we all go through stuff. It's no such thing as a perfect, you know, whatever. And so when he was explaining that, you know, and told me how like he still endured it, you know, he uh, met my mom and that helped out a lot, you know, of course. But, uh, I was like, well, yeah, dad, I don't have a boyfriend. So it's, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but, um, but, uh, I will say that it helped out a lot just to hear his, uh, uh, you know, his part, you know, of this same thing that I went through. And so um, I think that helped out a lot, just understanding that, you know, it may be hard n- uh, now, but like, just keep on doing you keep on working hard each and every day, and it'll get better. And it did. How actually. how far do you feel removed from that low place when you weren't playing a lot? Uh, Very far removed. Connor, my freshman year was a dark place. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. It, and not even just for basketball, but a big chunk of it was basketball. But, you know, it, it, it was just a big change from high school work to, like, high school work versus college work is completely different. And, like, understanding that you are responsible for your work. Like, you have to go to the – print center and do it yourself you have to meet with your teacher you have to set an appointment like stuff like that so it was it was just a lot going on at once but yeah it's a lot different now I will say that well that's good (laughs) it's better that's that's good that that helps make you a better leader that you've had some of those those problems in Mm -hmm. the past or Mm -hmm. or darker places in the past and Mm -hmm. now you can relay those right pass it on for sure let's talk about the fun stuff championships uh championships well as you so greatly (laughs) uh reminded me before this in high school I ran track and I think I went to state every year for the four by one and then I went to state like one out of the four years for high jump but um I really wish I liked the sport more because I didn't even remember like I really didn't but um I will say when we finally got there and like and we were in the lanes and I was you know in my spot for the handoff or whatever you know it did feel good to be like wow we really worked hard we really got here you know we deserve this type thing and so although we didn't like win get get first place it was still cool to you know get there you know be better than those past teams that you know right we had won against and so that feeling did feel great like I I I won't lie you know it did and to stand on the you know things at the very end I was like okay this is pretty cool I'm not gonna (laughs) lie and so uh yeah from that like I can say winning yeah I guess on the whole it does feel good to win for sure you may not like the sport but you love the winning yes I do like winning and so yeah that's probably one of my biggest champion memories I guess track is a a unique experience because you can win both an individual championship and you can win a team title Mm -hmm. with the relays Mm -hmm. like you're talking about Mm -hmm. what's the difference in feeling when you win a team championship versus an individual title um although in track as you do have like your own and then versus like the team thing but even in the four by one four by four is like I don't know how to explain it like I, I don't think one is better than the other because you're still doing your part like, you know, so an open 100 versus a, the four by one, like you're still doing that same distance type thing. Um, but I, I don't think there's really a difference. You know, I think either way it feels good because, you know, you did the work like getting there. But um, for me, I'm trying to think because for high jump, I think one year I got like sixth and I was like, oh, yeah, this is cool. And then the f- 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 four by one we got like i don't know fifth fourth and sixth and it felt the same way so i don't know it was even a high jump you're out there by yourself everybody's staring at you well oh okay so about that aspect it's 
I was scared for like my own things. So I, I, I guess I will say that like if it's individual, it's scarier because it is just you where. So if you win or lose, OK, you just sucked or, oh, you're great. Like, you know, type thing. But like as a team, I guess if y'all lose, it's just like, OK, it's all of us. And like right. at the same time, they're all like, oh, it's OK. So like you have girls there to be like oh you know it's cool it's fine so i will say yeah that's true if you win or lose on your own it's worse but as a team it's better because it's evened out i guess i bet the high jump is a lot like shooting a free throw because you're you're, well, you're out there by your, you're out there by yourself and everybody's staring at you are there some similarities there i was thinking about the t- uh like the actual like work footwork of it because you do have to go off the one leg and like you're, the same arm is going up but so I it's was, like a layup yeah it is at that first up jump but then you got to like move your body and make it you (laughs) but as far as like the nerves and yeah i think that's a very good like tie-in because it's like the same thing like it's nerve-wracking so i would say yeah that's similar well you you handled it going to state oh yeah you're you're hitting your free throws too (laughs) thank goodness (laughs) uh finally let's let's tie that to your experience at siu you guys are are still chasing that first championship Mm -hmm. in your time here Mm -hmm. Uh, what do you think is missing what do you think it's going to take to to go to hoops in the heartland and win it um i'm trying to think that's been on my mind uh recently actually basically because it's my last year but just thinking that exact same thing like what do we need to do um to just uh not even ensure because we never know once we get there but just like what do we have to do that's different from the last years and um I keep just coming back to the fact that we have to be very like doing the same stuff like don't change up don't falter from what we've been like I've each game we've gotten better I think and so I just think we have to stay at that rate and keep getting better and basketball practices now just keep like don't same thing like stay do the same stuff like don't falter type thing and so I just think we just have to I don't even know work hard stay at that level and just do our best at this point I think but yeah have a uh, maybe watch a Marvel movie on the way up there. Uh, I mean, if it <laughs> that'll helps, help, that'll help get you engaged. It right? might, uh, I, I was gonna say it may help me, <laughs> but yeah, just be c- consistent on like all the things that we've done. Like, don't do your own thing. And I feel like certain games, like nowadays, like you know, we have some kids that want to like go off like on their own things, and it's just like, no, we gotta stay team. We have to stay team. We can't win anything on our own. So I think that's kind of the biggest thing. I tell you, it's it's hard to believe you're about to graduate. I know. It really is. I was just a freshman, Connor. <laughs> Feels like you've been in the program a long time. Yeah, it actually does. At the same, It, it does, but then at the same time, it, it, it went by fast. Yeah. Well, but, c- yeah. congratulations on uh, everything you've accomplished, and hopefully there's more to come for you. Thanks, Connor. Yeah.